Hello jewellery maker, John Scott here. Just wanted to wish you a very, very happy birthday. 13 years, my word. 13 years, you've not had me on enough, have you? I'll see you very soon. Have a fantastic 13 days. Happy birthday, jewellery maker. From the hobby maker team. Happy birthday, jewellery maker. 13 years of crafting your own gemstone jewellery. And I know this birthday celebration is even more exciting gemstones to come. Happy birthday. Morning, jewellery makers. So this morning I've got uh, door number, I think it's 10. Should we have a look? So if we look in, so big surprise now. Here we are. So I've got the lovely Onyx. Here we are. So if we have a look, we've got really, really great. Two lovely strands of the Onyx. How beautiful this is. So we've got two, two strands, both rounds, different sizes. <clears throat> so I think this is an eight and a six. So these work really, really well with your uh, with wire work. So that's what I've decided to do this morning. So um, what we're gonna try and do is we're gonna try and do, try and get three weaves done today. So you can see it works really well, I think, this type of uh, wire work with the onyx, because you still get, you get a lot of light to it, uh, and you, you really, you know, you get that lovely glow. So if we look around the piece that we're gonna make, so if I pop those there for a moment, we'll have a look. So I've used, um, I've used plated wire with this. You can use whichever wire you'd like and whichever, um, I've used silver because I think it works really well with the, uh, with the onyx, but you can use whichever you'd like. So we're gonna work with um, some structural wires and some weaving wires. And I'll go through the gauges in a minute, but if we look around the piece, so you can see, so we've got all the, the two different sizes uh, of the onyx here, and we're gonna do, uh, so the weave that's going along here. We're also gonna make a, a clasp, and then you can do a really lovely snowflake or sunburst charm uh, to go on it as well. So you can also, you could use this um, to, you could make the piece and you'll have more than enough that if you wanted to make earrings as well, you could do a pendant, so you could do your own variations with it. So if we have a look at some of the um, tools and materials that I'm gonna use, so I'll pop that back on there. Um, so I've got my standard uh, pliers, so I'm going to work with some chain nose pliers, some round nose pliers, I've got my flush cutters, I might use my uh, bale making pliers, but if you don't have those, you can absolutely use your, um, your round nose, that's, that's fine. If you've got um, sort of slightly more specialist wire working tools, if you've got um, a wire twister tool, that, that'd be really good. Um, because what we're going to do, we're going to layer up wire work. If you haven't, what I'd say is um, when you want to make the bracelet, maybe if you haven't got uh, the wire twister tool, maybe have a one millimetre on the outside wire. But we will go through all the wires and in what, which order they go in. Um, and I think that's pretty much it tool wise. Um, so materials, what I've added in. I've added in some structural wires. So again, whether you want to work with your uh, one mil or you can absolutely do it with um, a 0.8 as well. And then I've also got um, uh, a 0.4. So this is gonna be my weaving wire. So we've got structural wires and we've got weaving wire. So what you'll see when I'm, when I'm going through the, uh, the demo is I'm going to try and show you on, on larger wires. So I'm actually going to use some uh, brightly coloured wires. So some of it's going to be aluminium, which I wouldn't recommend for using for the actual piece in this. I'm just going to show you with the demonstration. So when you'll see me setting it up, I'm, what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to show you on large wires and then I'm going to show you on the actual wires as well. So hopefully those weaves will... Um, you know, sort of, uh, you'll really start to see how, how they work, the pattern uh, that, that is formed, um, and we'll do a bit of repetition so it'll really, really um, get in, which I think that, that's the best way to learn weaves, is just doing it over and over and over again. So I'll show you with the large wires, that's why some of the demonstration will be in these quite garish colours, and then we'll actually look at it in the actual wire itself. 
So if we start off, what we're going to do, if we have a look at um, the, the, the bracelet itself. So if I show you, we, what we're going to end up with is something that looks like this. OK, so this is how it looks when it's flat before it's um, been shaped into the, um, into, the, into the bracelet. OK, so you can see there, you see all the way around. So it's a really, really lovely way of getting lots of light into um, the shape like that. OK, so we've looked at the tools. So what we're going to do, we're going to start to set up the wires that we've got. So if I show you, again, on the large wires, the order that you're going to have. So let's put them out on the mat. So these are the, these, this is the large aluminium, just so that you can see it. And we'll look how this corresponds to the actual piece itself. OK. So if we look at what we've got here, so the actual piece, we can see how this is going to correspond. So I've got on the outer wires, these two here, which are these two here, I've got a twisted either uh, a 0.8 or one mil. So two lots of those on there. So those are your outer wires. So you can see there, so they sit on the outside and they're the twisted ones. So that is, if you, if you don't have the, twist, the wire twister, you could absolutely use a, a one mil there. So we've got, the, we've got those. Then if we start to sort of go in a little bit, we've then got two lots of plain wires. So this would be, uh, represents a 0.8 or a one mil. And again, 0.8 or one mil. And we've got exactly the same on the bottom here. Okay, so those are those wires. Then what we're going to have going through the centre, and if we look on the piece here as well, so you can see that's the, these two are the 0.8. Then what we've got running through the centre here that the, that the rounds go on to, this is going to be, you will absolutely get a, a 1 mil or a 0.8 through your onyx here as well. So that's this wire running through the centre as well. And then we're going to bind everything together with a... 0.4 and that's represented with this really really bright red so that hopefully you'll be able to see it so if we start to set this up so I'm going to take and what you would take um, you would probably take about uh, I'd say maybe two meters of um, your 0.4 so if I just cut that off because you want to have enough rather than you can add in on this design but it's better if you can do sort of one continuous piece so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the two ends together and I'm actually going to work with um, two lots of, uh, of wires here. So although it's, it's sort of, if we join them at a meet at the middle, so you can see there, we're going to have two ends to weave with. So I'm going to take the, find the middle point, and do a loop like that. And it's crisscrossing here. So I've got one wire coming out here and one wire here. So I'm now going to pick up the central wire. Let me move this out of the way for the moment because we've got a lot of wires there. So I'm going to pick up this, this central wire. Now I've just put um, a loop at the end uh, just so that I know that that's, that's the central wire. So I'm just going to pop that in and just tighten that. So I've tightened that with the, the crisscross where the, the wires are coming out, crisscross for underneath that wire, not over the top. It's so that wire is sort of sitting in and the wires are coming out from underneath. So you can see I've got one coming at the top, one at the bottom. OK, so then what I'm actually going to do with that one is straight away, I'm going to feed onto it one of the larger, so one of the, um, one of the rounds. OK, so that's sitting on there. Then, so I'm going to have all of the, all of the, the beads that I'm going to work with, I'm going to have those to hand. So then I'm going to pick up one of the smaller size, so if I just pop that down for a minute, I'm going to feed on one of the smaller size. So we'll let that fall all the way down. So that's sitting like that. So we've got one round there and we've got the larger one there. And then I'm going to pick up the two just plain structural wires first. I'm going to lay those on top of that weaving wire. 
So it's a little bit fiddly at the moment because we've got, if you could see already, we've got three structural wires and we haven't got very much that is holding it together. Like a lot of wire work, when you're binding structural wires with a finer wire work, it's going to get a lot easier as you, as you work because it will really, really start to pull together um, and you're going to get that, that structure and that strength. So at the beginning, it's a little bit of a test of patience because you're having to hold lots and lots of wires together. But you just got to go with it and it will, it will all come together. So you can see, so I've left a little bit of a gap here. Uh, so I've probably got on your actual piece probably about two inches um, as well and I'll go through measurements when we look at the uh, the actual piece but let, if we just get the weave in our head at the moment so I'm going to pick put those wires on top and then I'm going to take that weaving wire and I'm gonna wrap once twice and bring round and you can see, I don't want too much of a gap with that wire work. It's so that I've, the gap, the distance between that central wire and these structural wires is the gap of that, is, is the space of that round. And it's still coming and it's, I've finished wrapping those and it, the wire is sitting underneath. So then I'm gonna take up that, that twisted wire, that outer wire, and I'll pop that on top as well. I'm gonna wrap once, twice, over all of the wires, and then when I've wrapped twice, I'm going to come up in between the twisted and the plain. I'm going to leave that there for a moment. So I'll pop that down. So now we're going to look at the top. So again, we're going to do exactly the same. We're going to do it at the top here. So I'm going to take this top wire, take the smaller of the rounds. And you can work if you wanted to do this and you wanted to, for your onyx to go further, you could absolutely use, you could use spacer beads, um, you, you, know, you could use any uh, pearls even if you wanted to because you're going onto a fine wire. So you don't need a large drill hole for the two smaller ones. So now as I'm gonna hold here, I'm gonna pick up these two and pop again on, on top, leaving about two inches from the end. And we're gonna wrap, so they're sitting on top of the weaving wire. I'm gonna wrap once, around the two, twice around the two, making sure that those are sitting really closely together. Give that a bit of a wiggle so it all starts to sit nicely. Then we're gonna pick up that outer wire and again, I'm gonna lay it on top. I'm gonna wrap once and twice and come up in between. So if we look at where we are now, so we've done exactly the same top and bottom. So what we wanna do now is we want to lock this into place. So I'm just gonna hold here, I take this one first, I'm gonna go across, we're gonna create almost like a, a chevron with these two wires now, which will lock this into place and then we can carry on with the design. So I'm gonna go now down underneath that central wire Bring it up and over and wrap around and coming back. So you can see, so I've gone all the way around there. I'm going to swap sides. So this was the bottom wire and it's now going to go up to the top. So I'll leave that one there. So now I'm going to take this top one and again, I'm going to come over and we're going to wrap one full wrap around that central wire. So I'm bringing it in, wrapping all the way around, and that now becomes the bottom wire. So they swap over at that, that midpoint. So that is a full, a full section. So then you're gonna repeat that. So we're going to add on our two smaller stones. Let's pop those there. And one on there. So what they'll do as well is they'll, they'll give it some structure as well as decoration. So again, so if we look at the, the pattern, so we've popped those on, that gives the space in between. So we're gonna come up and wrap twice around those two plain structural wires. So once and twice, always finishing underneath then once, twice around the two st plain structural wires and the twisted, and then we come up in between the plain and the twisted. And we'll leave that there for a moment. 
And so now we're going to take the top wire. We do exactly the same this side. So we're going to wrap twice around the two plane. And again, pushing those so they're next to each other. And then twice around the two plane and the twisted. So once, twice, and come up in between the twisted and the plain. So we now need to add on that larger one on that central wire. That through. And this is where we do that, the chevron again. So we come over and we'll wrap, do one full wrap around that central wire coming up and over. This wire now goes to the top, so it swaps sides. So then we take the top one because we need one on each side. This one comes over underneath that central wire and we wrap around and we're ready to start again. So hopefully with those wires, so it looks, it looks a pretty ugly like that, but hopefully you can see the contrast with the wires of how you're looking at it in sections. So if you can see that's a full section and that's a full section. So you've got your, your two smaller uh, rounds on the weaving wire. You've got your larger round on that central spine. And then you're wrapping always twice around the, the, um, the plane, then twice around the plane and the twisted, and then coming up in between the plane and the twisted, and then going across and almost creating that chevron. So if you're thinking about it and doing it in, in blocks, that's sort of like you, you can start to sort of see how you're then going to build the bracelet. So hopefully that, that's shown you how that weave works. So if we look at that with the, on the actual piece itself, you can see that in those, those chevrons as well. You can see where we've got the, the, the weaving wire, we've got the structural wires and we've got the twisted wires and how it's broken down into sections like that. So if we look now, at the actual piece itself. So I've got on this section here, I'm gonna actually use two, four, six, eight, and I've got, so two, four, six, eight, nine. So I've got nine of the larger rounds, and then I've got two in between um, of those, uh, the smaller ones. So if I move that out of the way, we can see there. So I need another four to finish this off. So if we look at the actual piece, so I'll just do a couple more of those um, of that weave. So I've got to create that bracelet, wire wise length, I've probably got about uh, nine and a half inches uh, going across here of, of my uh, wire work. So if you're cutting those, those lengths, that's gonna give you more than enough wire to do the, the bits at the end that we need to do as well. So, if I just untangle these, and remember about, about two meters of that, of that 0.4. So what you can do is, if you wanted to thread them, thread all of them onto that central spine, you can use a, a, a little loop at, at the end just to stop so that they don't fall off. So I'm just gonna move that one out of the way. So if we see where we are with this, just put my glasses on because I can't see when it's this, the finer wire. So I've now, I'm at the point where, so I've got two wraps going around the plane so I know I've at that point. I've got two wraps going around um, the plane and the twisted, so I know I'm coming out in between. So I know I need to do that little chevron to lock that in place. So again, so I'm gonna come round and those wires are gonna swap over. So again, let's bring this one and I've got the same on the other side. So I'm gonna speed up a bit with the weave here, but hopefully you will have seen on the larger wires how to do that. And you can always watch it and rerun. The thing I think with weaving is it's just, it's, it's just doing it over and over and over again. That's really what gets, gets the pattern or at least the tension as well of how much, you know, how hard to hold the wire. Just do it over and over again. So again, so I'm gonna hold here, I'm gonna wrap once, twice around those plain wires, bring it down. 
And you can already see, so as I was saying, you know, when you're starting off and you've done maybe, you know, uh, maybe two sections, you've got an awful lot of wire work and not much holding it together. Once you get to this point, it's a really quite a solid piece because you've, you've, you know, you've got all of this weaving wire, you've got all the, the stones, um, so it becomes a lot more structured and strong, which is obviously what you want, you know, for that, especially for this type of, you know, a, a bracelet or a bangle, you want that strength there. So to make sure these wires haven't twisted up, so just straighten that out, so open that. So we can do the same on this side. So though you have got two, two wires that you're working with, you're doing exactly the same on both sides. So if we bring this down, so again, two, two wraps around the plane, two wraps around the plane and the twisted, come up in between and then you're ready to do that chevron. So we're gonna take that bottom wire, wrap around that central spine, come out. That weaving wire swap side, so it now goes to the top. So this one, the one that's at the top, is now gonna come over, and this one is gonna become the bottom wire. So bring this round. So now what we've actually done is we've actually come to the end of our, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We've come to the end of the larger one. So what we want to do now is we're gonna finish, finish the bracelet. So you can see we started with the two. So we're gonna end on the two here. And that's just gonna give it a nice, neat finish. So we do our popping on on the one side and put that into position. And we're gonna wrap. So we're going to do part of that sort of uh, little section, but we're not going to add on that central central bead. So I'm going to wrap once, twice. And this is where that twisted wire, not just for decoration, uh, for actual practical use as well, really comes into its own now. So I'm going to wrap once, twice, and then I'm going to bring that wire coming up in between as if I was going to start that chevron and I'm going to lock it into place there. And what it will do, it'll just grip in between the twist of the, of the wire and that locks that there. So I'm going to do the same on the other side. Let's pop that on, put it into place. Exactly the same, once, twice around the plane, once, twice around the twisted. And again, we're going to bring it up in between and really push it down. Come in with my chain nose pliers and squeeze those down there. That then locks that in and we can then just snip those wires off without having to worry too much about binding them. And I'm also just going to give that another squidge there. So we've now got rid of those, the 0.4, because we're not going to do any more, more weaving. So that's given us the, the bracelet. Now you can see there is a very, you're almost going to get two different variations. If you look at the, um, where the, the, the depth is, so you can, you can manipulate this a bit. So if you want it to, so that that spine is a lot more pronounced, you can shape it so you can see the difference there of how much sort of comes underneath or you can flatten it out and you can see, so you're going to have something a bit more sort of like a, a, a bubble look there. So what we want to think about now is how then we work with um, and get rid of some of these wires. Often with wire work is we want to have that lovely intricate detail, but what can be very, very difficult then is working out a way to have a nice tidy, um, tidy end. So if we think about how many wires we've been working with here, we've got this, we've, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So we've got seven wires that we need to get rid of now and try and get it so it's nice and even. So if we look at, uh, we'll do this end first. The first wire that I'm gonna deal with is this central wire. So if I just snip that off for a minute so you can see where, where they are. Um, so you can see sort of like all the wires and, and the ends of them. So the first thing I'm gonna do, this is, this is the front of the, of the bracelet. So I'm gonna go probably about a centimeter after that, that end there. So that last wrap here, I'm gonna snip off here so we don't need that one anymore. And I get my round nose pliers, I'm gonna turn it over. I'm just gonna make a little loop and that's gonna get tucked in out there. So let's, there we are, that's gone in there. So we've now got rid of one wire. So it's almost like cheering every time you get rid of a wire because it looks pretty messy at this point. So we're gonna make it get rid of each of them. So the next ones we're gonna go into is gonna start working our way out. And always we, we want that symmetry. So whatever we do on this side, we're gonna do on this side. 
So I'm now going to take this first wire, so this is the, the, the inner wire, and a crossover like that. And we'll leave that there. And then going to go to the other side and take the next inner wire, which is this one here. I'm going to bring that over. And then I'm going to go to this side and take that one and I come over here. And then I'm going to go to this side and take this one and bring this one over. So we know sort of pretty much where they're going to be now and how they're crisscrossing and in which order. So now it's just a case of I'm going to hold these here. We don't want to pull too much uh, in like that to, to misshapen it. We just want to keep it so it's, it's looking quite neat. So now I'm going to take this, I'm going to wrap this. You're, so you're almost doing a wrap loop, but with a, a structural wire. I'm going to hold it here and I'm going to snip off there. And you're going to tuck that end in. So we're going to come over and we're going to do the same on the other side. So I'm going to swap over, take this one, just move those out of the way a minute. So you can see I'm working really, really closely. The area that I'm actually holding the wire, I've probably got a working area of, of way under a centimetre so that, because I don't want to, the only bit of wire I want to move is this tiny bit here. I don't want to move the structural wires. I don't want to move any of the wires sort of going past my thumb into, you know, into the, all the intricate detail we've done. So I'm working in a very, very, very small area. So I've got good control of the wire. And I'm going to snip off here and tuck that in. So we've now already got rid of three wires. So let's come back, see where this crisscross. You can try and line these up as well. So I'm going to bring that in and I'm going to go again. So I'm going to have that wrapping around here. So once, twice, snip off and tuck in. And this side, wrap again once, twice and snip off there. Okay. So what we're gonna do, if we have a look at this piece, I'm gonna bring this one in. So we've got this section here. So if we look at how it's, um, we're now at this point. So we've now got two wires here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go now down to just having it into to one. So if I just pop that back on there for a minute. So I'm going to look at this and this is this is the longer one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in, bend it out a little bit. I'm going to bring around there and I come in here. So it depends now what you want to do. If you've got um, if you've got two two wires, what you'll probably be able to do is you'll be able to get one of your um, your larger rounds onto it. If you've maybe used um, uh, three, it, you might struggle to get uh, with the drill hole. So you can see, so I've used on this one uh, three, three lots of 0 0.8 and I can't really get, get that on there. If you're using um, two, so two lots of 0 0.8 and you've done that as your structure, you should be able to get that. So it's, it's going on here. But so have, have a go with little sections and see how, um, see how they work with the drill hole. So if I just pop that there, so I'm going to have now hold here, I'm going to wrap once, twice, so that we've got rid of this wire here as well. And I'm going to snip off and we'll tuck that in. So whether you're working with another round or you pop a spacer there, so you've now got somewhere to attach. So if we do that much, in a, uh, we'll do it in a quicker way this time at the end, but you've seen how um, that works now and we can get rid of these wires. So remember a centimeter off, tuck that in. We're gonna crisscross these. So we're gonna go inner on this side inner on that side and let me just get the right ones so bring that round let's bring that there crisscross crisscross and again wrap and let's get rid of those so i'll do all the wrapping and then we can cut off so you can see how that then gets rid of all of these wires very quickly. And you can take a bit more time and get a neater look. You're always doing that test of, you don't want any sharp 
little bits of wire. So I'm just going to nip that in and we'll do the same there. And again, let's, it's just a really, really nice feeling once you've got, because you go from that sort of like that chaotic mess of all the structural wires. You just take them one by one, snip them off one at a time, try and get a little bit of symmetry if you can. It's just a really good feeling that you've then, you're gonna then finish off those ends really nicely. Again, I'm gonna choose the longer one here. I've left myself a, a little bit short on that one. So I definitely wanna, so I'm just angling it, coming over and do the same on that side, bit of an angle and use that wrap loop there. So again, so we're, I'm holding and bringing that round. So, so we've got the, the bracelet now. So what you could do is um, you can use, uh, so if I just use this actually, I'm gonna take this off here and we'll start to form that. So if you've got uh, uh, forming pliers, you could use those. If you've got um, sort of a, a mug, something like that, you can, also, you can also work. But you're just looking to sh start shaping the piece, so. You want it sort of so it's going, you know, you think about how it's going to sit on, on your wrist. But you can see, you know, you've actually got quite a lot. You've got a bit of flexibility, but we've got quite a few structural wires on here. Okay, so we can see how this is going to form now. So on mine, so if we look at the original one here, I'd actually got two lots of 0 0.8. So when those are twisted, I was able to get a round on. On this one, I've actually got three lots of 0.8. It's a little bit too big. So your choice is you can either, um, if you do two lots, you can get have a round on there. Or with this one, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and get just do the loop, okay? Because I can't get the, the round on. So if we pop that down there for a minute. So this is where your bail making pliers might, might come in handy, but you could absolutely use your round nose pliers if you wanted to. So I'm going to take these and we're going to go round and so we're going to do a loop now. And so again, this, we've got lots of structural wires, so holding it quite firmly, but essentially you're just doing that wrap loop. I'm going to get rid of that. So if you think now, we've actually got rid of, I'm going to do the same on the other side, we've got rid of an awful lot of wires there. So we're going to do the same, so let's bring that over. And because we're not adding the round, we don't need as much of those, those wires. So we've now created the, the core, the bracelet itself, but we don't want it as um, just sort of an open cuff. What we're gonna have is we're gonna make our own class. So this is now, so if I just tuck that in, you obviously do a much neater job there of all those twisted wires, but you've got, you've got the idea there. So we've made the, the, uh, the bracelet itself. So if that sort of sits on something like that, but what we want to have is we want to have it so that it's, it's a bit too open there. So we need something that's going to hold it together. So that's going to be our clasp. So you can either do the charm and the clasp or you could just do the clasp itself. So we know we've got two loops on either end, but so we're going to make our own clasp here. So it's going to look something like this. So a bit sort of like a, an S hook, but it's only going to be open on the on that one side. It's almost like a figure of eight, but it's, you can see, so it's open. It's open here. So I'm going to pop that down. I should probably turn it that way, shouldn't I? There we are. There we go. So if we have a look, so I think what we'll do, because we're, we're doing lots and lots of, of, of different weaves. So what we will do is again, we will work so if I just pop the bracelet there, we'll work on the larger wires and we'll work on the actual wires. So hopefully you can get to see, get to see the weave. So this one, I move all of this mess out of the way. Pop that there for a minute. So these are the actual wires we're working on. So I've probably got uh, maybe about uh, 10, 15 centimeters, something like that. Uh, so I've got three lots of um, 0.8. And again, my weaving wire is a, is a 0.4. So I'm gonna pop that down. And I've also got one of the, one of the rounds. So with, we'll look at the, on the larger wires. 
and we'll see how this weave works. So again, I would always go with um, more wire than you need so you don't have to add in. So maybe again, let's go with, um, you could go with uh, 50 centimeters to a meter, something like that of your, of your 0.4. So again, I'm gonna work with that. If you think about it in a similar way to the, um, to the bracelet, but we're not, uh, we're only working with one focal bead this time. I'm gonna have that central spine and I'm gonna work with, with two wires. So I'm gonna start in the same way, so I'm finding that, that central point, so I'm putting the two ends together, I'm gonna to make that loop. And always again, so it's where that crosses over, the, the structural wires are almost gonna sit on, on top of it. So that loop, that crisscross, is gonna be at the bottom. So I'm gonna slide that wire in and tighten that up. Now I am gonna go, so I've probably gone, um, I've left myself, so you can see on this one, I have actually left myself maybe a centimetre and a half, something like that from the end. Okay, and again, so I'm gonna take up the first wire and place that on top of that weaving wire. I'm gonna wrap once, twice, around all of them and bring round. I'm gonna pick up that next one, put that on top of this one. I'm gonna wrap once, twice and back to the start. So the difference is the same sort of thing, you're wrapping twice and always including that central spine, but the wires aren't swapping over this time. So I'm gonna go again once, twice, wrap around and bring that wire back. And again, once, twice and bring it back. So the wire, same sort of thing, but the wires don't swap sides. So if we now look at, you keep doing that, so if we now look at the actual piece itself, we can see where we are and I can already see. So I know when I picked this up, I have picked it up the wrong way because these wires are coming out from the top. So I know that I need to have it like that because those, those weaving wires always must be at the bottom. So if we look here, so I've done so uh, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. So about 20 of those um, wraps. And then what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bend, take out. So leave the wires here. I'm gonna bend that central wire up, put a bit of a kink in it. So bend it up, so right angle here and another right angle there. I'm gonna slide on the round. So let's pop that on here. And that's gonna become the central part of the decoration. And I'm then gonna bring that back down. So you can see from the side, so it's sort of like um, you've got your uh, right angles that, so that it's then gonna sit back in and then you can go back to your wire work then and you can do the other side. So I'm gonna start, so let's pop these wires where they need to be. And when you're, what you're gonna do then is you're gonna do exactly the same the other side. So we, we've gone, so if we look at where it is and try and move that out of the way and take this start from here. Make sure that the wires haven't moved around. So I'm gonna go, and because we're essentially starting again, so I need to hold that a little bit, control that wire. So I'm gonna go once, and we'll do one more, twice around that wire, come out, bring this one over, and just bring it in a little bit. So I'm gonna do one just to bind it. And I'm gonna go once, twice, and start again. So then you're back on. Once you've locked that bead into place, you can push those down. You're then going back to doing that two wraps around the two wires, always including that central spine. And again, remember that the wires don't swap sides. So you're gonna keep doing that. So do 20 on each side. So if I just whiz through a few more of these. And then what you, what you can do is so bring this down. I think I might have done three there, but you get the idea. And you're gonna keep going so that you've got that section there. Now, although you've got lots of um, uh, structural wires, so you've still got a uh, nice malleability there. So the first one I'm gonna do, so this one, if we imagine that I've uh, done uh, another 20 here, what you can do there is you can bring this so if we bring this all the way around, one side is gonna be open. So we'll have this as the, the one that we've completed as the open side. So we're gonna just bring that all the way around. And pretty much like we've closed the whole thing. 
but what we're going to do is we're going to snip off here. Again, we're going to leave probably about half a centimetre, just enough so we can bend it, bend it back. And let's turn that round. So let's bring that down and really, really go in now so that you don't want any sharp edges there. You're going to tuck them right into the weave. So I've got my chain those pliers. I'm really tucking all of those ends in. And we'll tuck that in a little bit more there. Then what you're going to do is you'd have a lot more of the weave coming up here, but you get the idea. So let's snip these off. And let's bring that round. So this one is going to be a, actually a complete loop here. So we're going to bring this round and you can do either three wires at once or one, one wire at a time, however neat you feel. Don't forget this, this part would, would, be, would have all the weaving, but I'm just going to speed through this bit so we can get the last section done. And again, we're coming at the back, snipping off those wires and let's tuck that in. You pay attention to those ends because that's going to be next to your skin and you've made your little clasp like that. So you've got the open end and you've got the closed end. So we know we can pop, pop a jump ring in here and we've got this bit that we can put into another jump ring and, it's, and it's gonna, we're going to tuck it in so hopefully it shouldn't fall out. It's nice and strong because we've got structural wires. So that's our clasp. So that's going to sit on, jump ring attached here and then that can go into a jump ring there. So you could leave it at that, but if you want to add that last lovely um, little snowflake detail that we're gonna do. So if you can see on the end there, which makes really, really lovely earrings. Again, let's work with both sort of sets of, of, of uh, wires. So we'll have a look at the weave on the larger wires and then the actual wires. So with this one, what, what you're going to work with is you're gonna work with um, some, base wires that you're then going to get, get rid of. Um, and when I say get rid of, you're just not, they're not gonna be in the original design. You can keep them uh, and keep using them and using them, but what we're actually gonna do is we're gonna remove them and then they're gonna create and leave us with that lovely, very, very uniform um, frill on the outside. So if we have a look, at, um, so the base wires I'm gonna use for mine, I've got um, uh, a one mil. So you could use, um, you could use a, a 0 0.8. I wouldn't, I wouldn't go any, any lower than a 0 0.8 because you do want some structure to it. So I've got the round that I'm working with, which is the larger one. And what we're gonna end up with is something that looks like this. So the base wires I was talking about are these gold ones here. So it looks really lovely like that. Um, and you could absolutely do your weave and, and lead those in and have a, a good lovely bangle like that as well. But we're going to sort of take it a step further and we're going to remove these to, to leave that filigree detail. So if I show you on the large wires, so these ones are going to represent the, the gold wires that we're working with there. And then I'm going to work with again some brightly coloured larger uh, purple wire just so that hopefully you can see, see the weave properly. So the first thing I'm going to, I'm going to do is I'm going to take, uh, leave a little bit of a tail. I'm going to pick up the first base wire. I'm going to wrap once, twice. So I've gone from underneath. So I come out from underneath. My, my starting and my end point here is from underneath that base wire. I'm then going to pick up the next structural wire and put that next to it. I'm going to wrap once around there and back to the start. And I take the next one and lay that next to it. And I wrap once and back to the start. I'm gonna pick up the last one. Let's just get those so that there, you can see the ends. I wouldn't necessarily say when you're working with yours to sort of splay them out like that. I'm just doing it so hopefully you can see where those wires are going, where this wire is gonna sit in between these ones. So then I'm going to take this last one and I go up and over and I'm back to the start. Now I've got no more base wires now and I need, so what I need to do is I need to, I've gone all the way up that little pyramid and so now I need to come all the way back down. So now I'm going to go up and over, but now I'm going to come in between these two here and bring round back to the start. Now I'm going to come up and over and in between these two and back to the start. 
got one more to do, which is, so it's going to be coming in between here and that finishes that little pyramid. But what we want is we want a little bit of a gap in between these, these sections of, of pyramids. So I'm going to go one more wrap around that first wire. Then what we can do is we can start to do the next pyramid. So if we do one more of those, so I'm working my way up to this top wire. So I'm going to go once back to the start. Then I'm going to wrap around the three wires back to the start up and over four wires and back to the start. So we've reached the top. So now we need to come all the way back down. So I'm going to come up and over in between these two. So if I hold it like that, you can see where it's coming there. Back to the start. Up and over in between these two. And back to the start. Finish that pyramid. So we do one wrap on the, that bottom base wire. So we've now finished that pyramid, but remember we want the little gap in between. So we do one more. And we're ready now to start and do the same. So you can see how quickly these are gonna build up. So if you're looking, always remember you're going, you're wrapping around and then when you get to that top, you've gotta to work your way back down and do one, one wrap so that you've got that nice space in between. So if you actually look at it, You've got three, three of those wraps. One belongs to this pyramid, one belongs to that pyramid, and one is the gap in there. And it just means, as you can see on the actual piece, when we start to um, spread out and fan out those weaves, it just gives us a little bit of space there. And it, that spacing wise works very well with this size. So if we actually now look at the piece itself, what we've got here, <clears throat> you can see hopefully how in the larger, brightly colored wire that translates to the actual piece itself. So it doesn't really matter that I've, I've probably got maybe 10 centimeters of these, these scrap base wires and this is a one mil. And the wire that I'm, I'm weaving with and I'm doing the pyramids with is a, is a, a 0 0.4. So if we look at it and I've got my tension, I've got quite, um, uh, it, it's quite taut there, it's, it's not loose. So that's, um, it's, it's holding it together really well. If you're, if you, when you're doing it and your um, tension <coughs> isn't particularly tight, what will happen is you're gonna take, go longer. So you won't need as much. So always try and sort of, as you're doing it, push it up, butt it next to the, the, the previous weave. So you've got that nice tension like that. So I've actually got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of those. And I've left myself some little tails here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is start to remove these base wires. So I'm just holding here, I'm gonna move the top one. And I'm gonna remove the next one. Now, if you find, if you find that your tension has been way, way, way too tight and you just can't budge these, these base wires at all, what you can do is very, very, very carefully go in and snip the base wire and pull that out. But be very careful that you don't snip the bit that you actually want, which is this part here. So I'm gonna take that last one now and we'll take this out. So although that by, by doing that weave, you'll have worked hard in the wire, it's still pretty, you know, it, it, you need to be quite careful with it. But what it's given you, because you've been wrapping around those base wires, it gives you that lovely uniformity. So let's have a look now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to snip off these ends. So get rid of that. And let's get rid of that. And let's just pop that down a minute. So what we want to do is now we're going to go around. <coughs> just take some of this. So I'm going to take now some structural wire. Now, what you need to have thought about, which sorry, I should have said before, if you're feeding this onto a different wire, what's really important that your base wire must be slightly larger than the one that you're gonna feed it onto. Otherwise, you'd have to leave it on that last base wire. So when I took that last one out, which is, was this one here, I could leave it on there and form it around, but I want a little bit more flexibility with it. So I'm gonna drop down a gauge. So this was a one mil. So I'm gonna go with a, 
uh, a 0.8. And you can see that's going to slide on really easily. So what you don't want to do is you don't want to have done all this lovely weave and then try and slide it onto maybe say a 1.25 because it's not going to go onto it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take my, um, take the round. And what we'll do is we will start to, so I'm going to use my bail making pliers. You could use a pen for this if you, if you, you know, if you need to, or another mandrel. I'm just going to start and create that, that round. So now when we feed this on. I always love this effect, effect because it's just sits so beautifully. So if we bring that in and you can see how that then sits. So that, if you leave it like that, it looks like a, it, it, it can be, it's also known as like a sunburst weave, but it frames the round really, really beautifully. So I'm then going to, if we have a look here, I'm just gonna bring that in. And let's put an angle in there and that's gonna lock that in place. And I'm gonna just make sure that, that sits in nicely. So just holding here, I'm gonna bring that round. So again, so I'm gonna hold here and again, you're doing that wrap loop. And let's just get rid of some of those wires. So it's gonna sit in like that. So I've just done a wrap loop at the top. Again, I'm gonna snip that off. Just make sure that it's neat and tidy. And let's have a look like that. Okay, so we know that's gonna sit on, sit nicely round. Uh, I'm gonna take a, just a little, one of the little scraps of my 0.4. So you, what you could do is you could leave a tail on the end of this, uh, the pyramids here if you wanted to do, um, to do this next bit. So I could have left it on, but what I need to then be really, really careful about is if, if when I pull on this wire, I don't wanna unravel all the weave. So I find it's just better to get a new piece and there are lots of areas that we can lose this wire in. So I'm now gonna just, again, so I'm gonna hold a little tail here and get a bit of a, a wrap into that section there. And then I can come down, pick up and go through the drill hole bring that down, position it. <clears throat> and then I'm gonna go through just one of the fans in there. And turn it round, position here. So all I'm doing now is I'm trying to sort of um, get it so it's quite central. And we're gonna go back through. So if I just bring that, so I've gone in between the framework and the bead so that it's locked in place there. So you can see, so I've gone out through the bead, into the frame, into the weave, and don't worry if it sort of moves it about a bit because you're gonna fan these out anyway. And we're gonna come then back out to the top. So again, I'm just gonna manipulate it so that that wire peeps back through and we can pull that round. Just make sure it doesn't disrupt the, the weave itself. So just bring that through bit of a pull and wrap around there. So now again, we've got a couple of ends that we need to get rid of. So let's snip off those 0.4. Make sure we don't snip that last wire. Then we can bring that in. So that now is our lovely charm. So what you can do then is you either leave that if you want your, uh, that's, that sunburst weave, or get the option that you've got, and this is the lovely thing with this, this pattern, is it gives you lots and lots of options. You can either leave it like that, or you then go in with your, so I've got my chain nose pliers, so I'm gonna hold here, and this is, do you remember when we were doing these pyramids, we left that, that little gap in between, so that we can go in, so I'm gonna hold and I'm gonna work my way up the pyramid. So I'm gonna hold and turn out, hold and turn out. I'm gonna leave that central one, go to the other side, hold and turn out, hold and turn out. And I'll make my way all the way around and I'll do half of it so that you can see the difference here. So this is really what takes it, it's manipulating these, the little pyramids this is what gives you either that snowflake look or the sun, sunburst. So again, it's gonna get a little bit fiddlier because the space is taken up by the flare of those, 
as you're fanning out. So if I just hold you hold these, you can see the difference in both sides. So what I'm going to do as well, just to work hard on it slightly, is I'm going to then just give that a pinch down. But you can see the difference there. So it's only a subtle difference, but so that's your sun, sun and that's almost like the snowflake. What you're then going to do is you can get your jump rings and you can see at the back here how you then you can add all of it, any combination that you want there. Um, so you've got the clasp and that's going to sit in here. You've got the charm and that can work as well. So if you actually think about that <clears throat> in that one piece, what you've actually got there are several different weaves so many different pieces of jewellery you can use with those. So you can make your own class with that. You can work that, that design actually works very well with um, different size beads, um, spacer beads, different coloured wires. Um, yeah, I think you've got, you've got quite a bit there that you can make lots and lots of different pieces of jewellery with. I've all used plated wire with it. Uh, rounds, you'll get very, very different effects as well whenever um, if you want to work with uh, irregular shapes as well so yeah so I hope that's been really useful um, yeah so there we go enjoy it jewelry maker so thanks very much happy 13th birthday jewelry maker you are officially a teenager over the last 13 years you have brought us the most amazing products and fantastic inspiration so thank you so much and have a wonderful birthday i'm very excited to come and celebrate with you hi charlie here 